Just a few days ago, Onshape released an update that allows us to control Boolean values and sketch text using expressions. That's a mouthful, but what that means is any of these checkboxes inside of uh, the features that you're used to, that's a Boolean. It's either true or it's false. And so there's true, there's false. And I can now right click this and go convert to expression. And now I'm presented with this window where I can type any type of equation that is feature script, you know, syntax, and as long as it results in true or false, no matter how complicated it is, then that will work. And I can drive this uh, button using logic instead of using my mouse clicks. Uh, likewise, if I sketch something on the top plane and I throw some text out here, I can right click this and go convert to expression. And again, any feature script, syntax, code that I want to put in here, uh, I can build in logic and make it create the text. As long as it results in a string value, it will work. So let me run through some examples of what that might look like. One that uh, this unlocked for me that I think is really great. I, I've run into this kind of problem on a number of things where I want to use a move face feature and I want it to be able to go in a positive direction and a negative direction. Uh, so you might just think, well, why not just flip the arrow? But I, I can do that, but I want this to be driven by somewhere else. So if I wanted to configure this and sometimes it moves out and sometimes it moves in, I don't want to also have to configure this button for every possible permutation. In this case, I'm using uh, a variable, so there are infinite permutations. And um, so let me show you how we can work with that. Right now, I can't put a negative value here. If I go negative one, this will fail, and it'll tell me that it has to be between zero and 500,000. So that's not going to work. But I can put in my clearance variable here, um, and I'll flip it because I want it to be clearance, not interference. But there could be a scenario um, in this. This is kind of my contrived example, but it's, it's not too far off of the truth um, or off of you know, reality. You, you may want to design a part that has clearance some of the time and has interference some of the time. Maybe you're dialing in a press fit or maybe it's designed for two different materials and they need to be different. Um, I've also seen ones where someone was driving the length of an imported geometry and they needed sometimes for it to be longer, sometimes for it to be shorter. Uh, and that turned out to be pretty hard for them to actually automate the way that they want it. So now we can do it. Um, so the first thing that was not obvious to me right away when they first uh, released it and explained it uh, briefly is that these buttons are also Booleans. So under the hood, this is the exact same thing as a checkbox. It's just dressed up to look like arrows. So I can right click and convert to expression. So now, um, you know, if I wanted this to flip based on logic, I can do that. So when this goes negative, I want this to flip. Uh, so the way that I can do that is with, um, I can just type clearance is greater than zero. So that results in true. And if I go here, now it results in false. Now you'll see we still get a failure because we still can't go negative. So to fix that, we can just use an absolute function, which will take a value positive or negative and always return the positive. So ABS is our absolute function and then I'll put clearance uh, inside of parentheses and there we go. So now we've got this working in both directions using a single variable input. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, next let's look at some strings. So strings meaning text. Um, so if I have that, I can go convert to expression, and I've got a variable already set up here called length, and it's 50 millimeters. So maybe I want um, to label my part with something that says length is 50 millimeters. Uh, one thing to note here, I said it earlier, but I just want to show you what I mean. This, this has to be a string, and it has to be like string as in feature script syntax, the same, the same feature script that all the features are written with. So the quotes here make this default text a string. If I get rid of it, this is going to fail because it's no longer a string. It's not sure what it is. So here we go. If I wanted to put uh, length is, and I'm going to add a space and then in that quote, and then I can use the tilde for concatenation, and I can just type length. And I'm going to show you a couple of the, the, the walls I bumped into and how I got around them as I was experimenting here. So you can see that we're getting some kind of crazy gobbledygook here. Um, and what's happening is because I used the tilde for concatenation, any length that has uh, met, like, units with it is called value with units. And that's like a type that's in feature script. And what it actually is is a, a map. A map is a key value pairing, meaning you feed it the key and it gives you the value. So here, one of the keys is unit, and the thing it gives back is unit spec meter. 
And then uh, the other one is the, the, the key is the value, confusingly enough. It's the key is called value, and the value of that will give us 0.05. Um, so 0.05 meters is equal to 50 millimeters. Everything under the hood is meters. So uh, anyway, long explanation to show you why this is showing up. If we edit this, one thing we might try it. Here, let's just get rid of length is and the, the concatenation, see what we get. It doesn't even like it at all. It, it's going to fail. So one thing we might try is to use a toString function, which is especially unobvious because it doesn't autocomplete here, but it does work. So now we're getting just 0.05 meters, which is still not exactly what we want. Um, but one thing to note is the you can divide out, like basically this is 0 0.5, 0 0.05 times meters. So if you divide by some length unit, it will get rid of that and return the value. If I divide by uh, meter, then it will just give me 0 0.05. But if I divide by the value that I want, which is millimeters, then it, then it gives me 50, which is great. That's what my length value equals over here. So uh, we can do it that way. Um, although, if we're concatenating, we may not need to use this toString function. Uh, let me just do an empty string, or I'll just, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. Length is space concatenate. Let's see what we get. Length is 50. That's pretty good. Um, whereas if I had just that without uh, dividing by millimeters, we get the whole value with the units thing again. So divide by millimeters, and uh, then I can just go ahead and add my own string to finish this out and give the, the units back. So there we go. Length is 50 millimeters. Um, now we may want to use something that's been measured, uh, some arbitrary thing like this. And if I create a variable from that measured, and I'm going to measure a length of this line, length, let's call it length 2. Um, it's, it's a long number, and this is actually rounded, and, and the number goes on, and I'll show you what I mean. So let me just get rid of that. We'll make a new sketch. Convert to expression. So if I show, let's see, like length 2 is, same deal here, concatenate. Length 2 divided by millimeters. And we get this huge value. This is like, you know, so many decimal points. We don't need all that. So one thing we can do here is use a function called round to precision, or you can use a rounding function. I like round to precision. The precision meaning you can tell it how many decimal points you want. So this one does autocomplete, which is nice. I'm going to cut that and paste it here in the first argument. And then the second one is our precision. Um, and there we go. So now we're getting that number rounded to a reasonable value. And we can, again, concatenate the last part. Cool. So that's how that works on the strings. But I do have a, a kind of fun, slightly more complicated, advan uh, more advanced example. So he here's an example where I have uh, a cube that I've just created using my cube feature that I wrote that I, I don't really use too much for modeling, but I do use it w when I just want to like slap some geometry out really quick to do tests like this with. Um, so it makes it really easy to just adjust. Uh, and then what I'm doing is I'm measuring the height. And I'm creating a variable based on the length of this edge that is height, and likewise with width based on that edge. And then what I want to do with the text is compare these two and make some kind of statement about that. So I can throw some text here, convert to expression. And what I can do is uh, a Boolean. I, I, I'm going to do what is a called a ternary thing. I basically, I'm asking a question using a Boolean, like, is this true or is this not true? And then if it's true, use this value. And if it's not true, use the other value. So the question I want to ask is, is height equal to width? So to do that, I'll say height, double equal sign width, question mark. So that's my question. And then uh, next I need value if true. And I will use a string here. Remember, everything has to result in a string. So this one is going to say height is equal to width. And the next one will say width. Um, not equal to width. I can't. Okay. Um, there we go. And I'm 
I'm just going to make this a little smaller so you can see it. Let's make it 10 high. Great. Uh, one hot tip about centering this that I like to do is just grab those corners and grab a midpoint constraint with the origin. Okay. Um, but I actually don't want that because you want to read it. Um, sure. Sure. We're going to leave it alone. All right. Height is not equal to width, which is correct. But if I come into my cube feature, I'm going to check final, and that will run all these features while I'm editing. So if I make these equal, let's make them both 50. Uh, yeah, height is equal to width. So that's working. That's great. But what if I wanted it to be a little bit more complicated? So if it's not equal, I want to find out is it greater or is it smaller? So we can do that using another ternary. Um, so inside of here, just again, looking at the anatomy of this code here, this section is my Boolean. I'm just saying, is this true or is this false? And then the question mark indicates that I'm beginning you know, my, to answer that question in the ternary. Next, I have this is the value that it returns if the Boolean is true. And after the colon is the value that it returns if the Boolean is false. Now, I'm going to replace the second one. If, if it is not equal, I want to do another ternary, basically ask another question. So is it equal? No. Then is it bigger? So that's what I'm going to ask. And I'm going to say height is greater than width. And if it is, then I can say height is greater than width. And close that. And if it's not, I'll say height is less than width. All right, and here's what I want to show you. That is going to fail. And I'm not exactly sure why I can't explain it, but something, 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 code, syntax, something. Um, the thing that I found that gets around this is if I put the entire second ternary in parentheses. I'm not sure why. Somebody can probably explain that to me. So there we go. I've got it working, I believe. Let's do that. We'll check final. So there we go. Height is less than width. That is correct. And I can pull it in. Height is greater than width. Also true. So that's how you can use uh, some more advanced logic to drive this stuff. Now, if you use your imagination a bit, you could probably figure out how you might want to use this to label parts if you're doing certain things. Um, or you could like go ahead and label it with the length of a part. And you know, there's a ton of opportunity here to do some pretty cool stuff. Um, I've got one more example here on how to use sketch text with configurations, especially useful for labeling parts. So let's make some configurations first. This one we'll call it uh, size, and we'll have big and small. Easy. And then get my face out of the way. Do that. We'll call this one color, and do red, green, blue. All right, we've got these two configurations. And now I can change those up here, big and small, red, green, blue. So that would give us six permutations. Two times three is going to be six. So instead of having to like configure every possible way that these could be combined, I can use some logic. Convert to expression again. And I want to say size is blah. But how do I get this in here? Uh, maybe I would type hash size. No, it hates it. OK. Let me show you what's going on here, um, and I think you'll find this useful. So over here in the configuration panel, there's these three dots, and I can go edit feature script IDs. So the name that I'm viewing is called size, but the actual name of this thing in code language is that. So if I copy and paste that here, let's edit the sketch and edit the text. So I'll concatenate and make that hash. So now it's saying size is small. That's correct, but I don't want to have to remember or think about that ridiculous code. So I'm going to go over here. Uh, sorry, it's not ridiculous. It's a very unique and amazing piece of uh, string of characters. But we're going we're gonna to make it simple. I'm going to just call it size. And you'll notice down here, um, big is actually called default, and I'll show you what that does. So this is saying, I changed something. And if you've referenced this all over the place using the old ID, it's going to break that. Let's see what that does. Yes, it does. So I'll edit the sketch. 
this is no longer existing. I'll just do size like I originally did. Uh, this is case sensitive, so I used capitals and we need to do that. So now it's going to say the size is default, which is wrong. It's big. Same problem here. This is just um, we need to change these IDs. So I'm, I'm taking you the long way around, but uh, all you got to do is just change them right away as soon as you create your configurations. Uh, oops. color. Great. So now we should be able to really easily address those. So I'll concatenate and oh, let me put a space. And color is color. Look at that. So now if I change these, the text should update for us. All right, that is it. That sums up the experiments that I did as soon as I saw that uh, new update drop. So uh, hopefully that helped some of you all to make the most of those new features. And of course, as always, my ulterior motive is to help everybody get more fluent with FeatureScript. So hopefully I'm helping with that too. Uh, if so, like, subscribe, hit the bell. I'll drop a link to this document in the description, as well as links to those primitive features like the cube and you know all of those if you want to use them. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching.